So here we have Ilganoth, the Heart of Corruption. This entire fight is nothing but a big DPS check for your raid. You can't damage the boss directly until Phase 2 begins, and there's a couple of things you have to do to trigger that, which we'll go over them one at a time here. So Phase 1 is all about killing the adds that are going to spawn periodically throughout the room. You have to kill these adds in order to get inside to actually fight the boss. The adds, when they die, are going to spawn something called a Nightmare Icor. These things are going to fixate on a random player, and they're going to follow that player around. Now, we'll, we'll touch on what they do in a second, but let's discuss the adds first. So the first thing you're going to want to do is, at the start of the fight, there's going to be two Dominator Tentacles that are going to be standing in front of the boss. You're going to have to have each of these tanked at the same time. If the Dominator Tentacles are ever not being attacked by anybody in melee range, they do something that's called Rupturing Roar. This will periodically damage your entire raid for a high amount of damage. They will do this constantly when nobody is within melee range of them, so you need to have your tanks on them at all times. Periodically, the Dominator Tentacles will target a random player and cast an ability called Ground Slam. This is a straight line AoE that's going to knock back any players hit by it and deal moderate to high damage to them. The big thing to watch out for with this attack is if Ground Slam hits your tank, either one of the tanks on the tentacles, it's going to knock them away from it and out of melee range. This is going to result in a couple of things happening. Either the tentacle is going to go and do its roaring phase and start doing AoE raid damage to the entire raid, or it's going to go into its next attack and pretty much one shot one of your other melee DPS, which is called Nightmarish Fury. This attack is going to do incredibly high damage over the course of 6 seconds to anyone within melee range that the tentacle targets. So if your tank got knocked away, it's going to immediately one-shot one of your other melee DPS unless they burn a personal cooldown. Now, on heroic difficulty, this attack also has a stacking buff that the tentacle gets, increasing its melee damage by 4% with each stack. So these tentacles will get to the point where they will even one-shot your tank if they aren't bursted down quick enough. So all DPS needs to be on them. They are your priority target whenever they are up. You focus them above all other adds. So after all the Dominator tentacles are bursted down, you're going to want to switch to any Corruptor tentacles that are alive. These tentacles are going to periodically cast a debuff on random players called Spew Corruption. This is going to cause them to create pools of Nightmare Corruption on the ground around them for 10 seconds. These pools do incredibly high damage to anybody standing within. Anybody that gets tagged with this debuff is going to want to move to the edge of the room and drop the pools as far away from the eye as possible. Too many pools all clustered up in the center is going to cause melee DPS to die very quickly when they go to pull all the eye cores in to burst down the eye to get into the boss chamber. The third ad he's going to spawn is called a Death Lair Tentacle. Now, these adds are not a high priority, they cast an ability called Mind Play. This is interruptible, it is the only interruptible ability in this entire fight, so every single one of your ranged DPS that has an interrupt should be using it on this tentacle. Mind Play, as it's channeled, will quickly kill any player it targets unless it's interrupted. Now, all you have to do is interrupt this thing and prioritize the other edge. You don't have to focus it immediately so long as it's being interrupted correctly, it's not going to do any damage to your raid which is why it's lower priority. And finally, the last and least important ad that you're going to have to focus on is something called a Nightmare Horror. Now, when this thing spawns, all that the tank needs to do is pick it up and face it away from the raid. It's going to do an AoE attack in front of it called Eye of Fate that's going to do very high damage and increased damage that you take from the next attack successively. So your tanks are going to have to do a tank swap when they get hit by this. Uh, pretty much you just want to pull the Nightmare Horror over to any tentacles that are up, things like that, and you want to just kind of try and cleave them down while keeping it faced away from the raid if possible. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't really do any type of serious damage. It spawns the pools of Nightmare Corruption around it, which is why it's best to keep a tank away from the eye. But otherwise, it's 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 the last thing you want to kill. And when it dies, it's going to spawn four of the, the bloods that you're going to have to pull over to the eye to detonate. So, let's talk about getting inside now. So, all of Phase 1 is pretty much dedicated to killing the eye that is blocking your entrance to the boss chamber. Now, the eye itself doesn't do anything special. He's got one attack called Nightmare Gaze, which is going to target random members of the raid and just inflict a, a good burst of damage. There, there's no way to dodge it or avoid it or anything like that. It'll target anybody at any time. Um, so all you have to do is just keep an eye out for it. 
Uh, but the eye itself takes 99% reduced damage from player attacks, so there, there is no point to trying to actually beat it down with any of your own abilities. How you get into the boss chamber is the nightmare icors, the little bloods that are going to spawn as you kill the adds, need to be kited to the center of the room where the eye actually is. You then need to kill them on top of the eye, just like the Spine of Deathwing fight. Once you destroy, once you kill 20 of them, the eye will disappear and you will be able to gain entrance to the boss chamber and begin phase 2. So the only thing to really watch out for with the bloods is when you detonate them on the eye, you're going to want to move out of the AoE that's going to that's going to spawn as they explode. It is enough to one shot a tank if you detonate 10 to 15 of them at the same time. Each one I believe does about 300,000 damage. So you're going to want to move away as soon as it spawns. Other than that, the only other thing that they do is as they slowly follow players around the arena, they're going to give you what's called a touch of corruption stack every time they melee you. This is a stacking dot that does 100, 105,000 damage every two seconds for each stack of it that you have. So you're going to want to prioritize, if you're a healer, you're going to want to prioritize people that have three or more stacks of this because the damage will get unmanageable. It helps to use Mass Dispel right after you kill all of the, uh, the Bloods right at the eye. That way you can cleanse most of the raid, if not all of them, if they're stacked the right way. And it just eliminates a huge portion of the incoming damage because people are going to take stacks from that. You can't really avoid it. The Bloods melee attacks, they don't really hit hard most of the time as a healer. I just stood there and let them beat on me for until I got to four or five stacks and I cleansed myself. Much easier than trying to kite them around the room and wasting time casting spells and things like that. So once you get the eye down by detonating all the bloods, you're going to get into the boss chamber and this begins your DPS check. Now, the boss is only going to do one really annoying thing while you're in here and that's an ability called Cursed Blood. This is going to mark several members of your raid with a big circle. It's an AoE attack that's going to detonate after 8 seconds and do incredibly high damage to anybody standing within the circle. So you're going to want to spread your raid out evenly around the room. You can overlap the circles as long as nobody is standing within the circle of another player. There is more than enough room, even if you have a full raid, nobody, there's not going to be enough people marked that you're going to have overlapping uh, players standing in each other's circles unless you guys are doing something wrong, because there is more than enough room in that chamber. I know it doesn't seem like it, but there is. Other than that, all you're going to do is just DPS the boss, blow whatever cooldowns you want to use on him. You know, it's up to your raid leader if you guys are going to lust or things like that. There's a couple of different strategies that work. But pretty much you only have to get the boss down to about 60% the first time you go in because you get a little bit more time in the second, fa in the second phase too when you go back into the chamber for the second time. So when you go into the chamber, the boss is going to start channeling something called Dark Reconstitution. This is going to, it's a slow casting ability, when he finishes casting it, he's going to regenerate the eye at the front of the chamber, and anybody still inside the boss, the boss's chamber itself, will be killed immediately. So, you're going to get a countdown if you have DBM installed, you're going to want to start making your way towards there. People that have movement speed abilities should be in the back of the chamber since they can get out quicker, and you have your slower your slower uh, players like Death Knights, things like that, that, that can't you know roar or cast a speed buff on themselves, things like that. You want to position them near the front, because anybody that gets caught inside here cannot be battle rezzed until the next time you go back in, so that means they won't be able to help you with the adds until you get back into the chamber for the second time. Otherwise, that's pretty much it to the entire fight. Uh, the second time you go into the boss's chamber, he's going to cast something called Final Topor. It's essentially an AoE wipe. Uh, it'll instantly kill every raid member as soon as he gets the channel off, so it's do or die on the second phase. Now, a couple of tips to help your raid out, which we found useful, is we didn't actually lust on the boss himself. We lusted at the end of the first phase too, when we came back out, to kill off the Dominator Tentacles very quickly. Because those Dominator Tentacles make the second phase one very, very hard if you don't get them down quick. The adds that spawn, because they spawn much quicker, can overwhelm you, especially if your healers are already low on mana at that point, things like that. You, We, since our DPS was so high, we didn't need the Lust to actually kill the boss. We got him plenty low enough in the first phase to, to where we could just stand there and just use our, our normal cooldowns to kill him in the second phase too. Uh, but again, that depends on your raid setup and what your raid leader wants to do. It was just very helpful for us. 
Uh, likewise, also how we kited the horrors around um, and just cleaved them down near the other tentacles and stuff like that. But you have to make sure your tanks know what they're doing because they have to keep the horror faced away from the raid. Uh, one of those eye beams is enough to one shot most of your your ranged characters and people that aren't tanks or uh, people that wear cloth armor, things like that that have a low armor value, they will get one-shotted by the eye attack from the horrors. So, um, having a lot of AoE classes as well helps out a lot with killing the Bloods. Uh, you don't want to screw them up. You don't want to kill the Bloods away from the eye. The, the more Bloods you detonate on top of the eye, the quicker your Phase 1 is going to be. And phase one is really what drains the mana from your healers because the, the cursed blood honestly is the easiest thing to manage as a healer. Uh, it's a very predictable attack. You can you can start precasting heals for it. Uh, the chambers are pretty small, so if you have AoE heals, they'll hit almost all of your targets. Uh, that's the most manageable thing in the encounter for a healer. Phase one, on the other hand, is a nightmare. So you want to get through that as quickly as possible. Um, if you're fixated. Uh, your raid leader will call for everybody that's fixated to move to the eye when you guys are going to AoE them down. Don't AoE them before that. You're going to piss your raid leader off and it will most likely result in a wipe if your healers go out of mana before you get into the second phase two. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Otherwise, the fight's just a giant DPS check. If you have the DPS to beat the timer, then you're good to go. If you don't have the DPS to beat the timer, there's really nothing you can do to improve that strategy. You have to have the DPS to beat this. Honestly, the hardest part of this fight for any raid is going to be managing the adds. Once you guys get that down, this fight will be a piece of cake for you. Um, as soon as we figured out the rotations for the adds, when they spawn, how to tank them, and everything like that, uh, it became so much easier compared to other times that we tried to do this. So don't don't worry if you wipe. It's going to happen. Uh, there's nothing you can really do to avoid it your first couple of times. You just got to focus on the ad priority, and then the fight becomes so much easier.